this next session is going to be generating is going to be about generating significantly more revenue with your website and your digital business. I'm Kathy Haley. I'm the publisher of TV News Check, and I want to ask you, what if TV stations could engage their communities in an online platform that combined the best of social media with interactive live streaming, local personalities, and brand safety, all while boosting traffic on their own websites? Nonstop Local, KHQ in Spokane, long a digital innovator, is hoping to do just that with Cord Communities, a new platform that enables media companies to create their own communities that invite people to engage their interests from cycling, gardening, or cars, to even politics. I'm here today with Annie Quisenberry, who is Director of Business Development at Nonstop Local, KHQ in Spokane. This is a station owned by Cowles Company. And Paul Wagner, CEO of Cord, a company that helps organizations of all types and sizes build online communities rich with actionable first-party data. Thanks for sticking with us, you folks. If you have a question, do take that microphone right there, and we'll answer it. Come up, come join us on stage. Okay, might as well just yeah. stay, up here. Have a cup of <laughs> conversation. Um, Annie, what are you hoping for as you explore a cord community? Yeah, we really have four primary objectives. Um, first and foremost, we want to further our mission as a local broadcast company um, of strengthening community, delivering an authentically local experience, and connecting with businesses and one another. Secondly, um, we want to expand our audience, particularly to younger generations, the, the folks that we aren't capturing through our linear broadcast or even in our streaming right now. Um, third, we want to create new monetization and revenue opportunities, and the core platform exponentially increases your ad-ready pages and your available advertising impressions as well as sponsorship opportunities. And fourth, we want to proactively mitigate any um, impact to traffic and visibility for news publishers on third-party social media platforms like Meta X um, as they change their algorithms and um, kind of reduce that traffic and visibility. Which has been a significant problem for companies, especially in Canada where that's starting. How would you, how would you plan to drive traffic? Are you going to use KHQ to do that to the community? Absolutely. Um, the community is really an extension of the nonstop local KHQ brand. So we will leverage all of our communication channels that we use for self-promotion already. Our linear distribution, our website, our apps, our email. But I think what I'm most excited about is Cord's notification, built-in notification capabilities. So we can use our communication channels, but as we all know, it's mass media, right? It's really broad reach where we don't want to be spamming people all the time. So with Cord, we can notify members of the group based on the topic of the content. So if they're a member of a particular group and something new is posted in that group, we can just notify the members of that group as opposed to all the members within the community. Um, or you can even dial it down further to specific members so it's, it stays really, really relevant to people based on their interests. And it's all automated, I guess. You don't have to worry about those alerts. Good. Um, is it about driving traffic to the station's website or the newscast? Um, I think it's more about meeting the audience where they are. Um, we've heard that theme several times throughout today, and I bet most of you, if not all of you, have seen research at one point or another with the, the staggering numbers of people who um, say their primary news source is social media. So rather than trying to change that trajectory and pull them back to our other traditional distribution, we want to meet them where they are um, and capture, again, that expanded audience there. And it's not all of the box on the wall. No, absolutely not. And as I mentioned this morning, it's it's both entertaining and a bit disturbing to watch my kids and the way they engage content. Um, but that shows a, a trend, a pattern that's now deeply established and continuing to evolve. Uh, the way we see this is by, in essence, providing a framework for an audience to engage more deeply their local media partner and, again, also enjoy content the way they're accustomed to enjoying it, which is not only the content existing in a silo, but having it in such a way that you can engage the content with others, right? 
this sort of idea of community experiences around content is one of the drivers of the platform. And we've talked about it being becoming an active news hub, the community. Talk about that, Annie. Yeah, I think there's a couple ways this works. Um, one of the ways is the extension of our news coverage. So we have linear news coverage, traditional newscasts, you know, breaking news cut-ins, and then we can extend that coverage on our, our stream, right? But what happens when there's so many topics of interest that you don't have enough distribution avenues to cover them all? Or if there are topics um, that the community continues to be interested in, but maybe don't warrant taking over the airwaves or your mainstream, well, you can then continue those conversations with those highly engaged groups on a platform like Cord. Um, so that's one of the ways. I think the second way is Cord is an interactive platform, whereas linear and streaming not interactive. So your your news talent who are on there continuing those conversations get real-time feedback and real-time questions. So that allows you to get that immediate insight into what's meaningful and important to your audience. And then you can, you know, translate that feedback back upstream, back to your stream, back to your linear um, newscast as well. Do you have a specific strategy for attracting younger audiences? Yeah, um, test and listen. You know, there's plenty of research that shows what Gen Z and what millennials are interested in. And, and sure, we can try to engineer some of that in the platform to attract them in, initially. But really what we want them to do is take it into their own hands and create the groups that interest them um, and connect with others who share that interest. You can imagine this as a really compelling opportunity for what you might call micro-influencers or lo- local influencers right, to start building their own audiences with a media partner on that domain, right, which benefits everyone. You, you, you'll be growing local influencers. I could see it developing that. Annie, what about monetizing your KHQ community? Yeah, this is the really cool part. Um, so we've identified several monetization opportunities. Obviously, there are sponsorship opportunities, and you can go as big as a major sponsorship if you want to sell kind of a, a naming sponsorship um, down to, you know, specific group sponsorships. And this is where kind of targeting comes into play, right? You've got these really niche interest groups that would be very appealing to an advertiser because everyone in there is opted in and saying, hey, I'm interested in this. And, you know, therefore, therefore I may be interested in the product that you're, you know, sponsoring. Um, so uh, that's sponsorship is one of the options. Paul and his team are also building in ad units that we can direct sell into or um, distribute programmatic into as well. So that's another monetization opportunity. Um, there's a live streaming component. So we will host live events that can be sponsored or have commercials inside of them. And then there's also sponsored post opportunities, not unlike um, what's available on other social platforms. Think of it this way. Every member of a community. So, KHQ has 20,000 members that opt into the community. One, that's 20,000 registrations. So you now have anonymous data that has been, in essence, converted to a first-party transaction. But that also generates 20,000 current ad-ready pages, right? Because every member of that community has their own hub, has their own page where targeted ads can be served up, the most relevant ads. 20,000. Target. I'll take that. Um. Yeah, I actually, um, as part of this exercise, I had to build out a five-year pro forma, and the numbers are actually pretty staggering. So if, you, if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask me. <laughs> uh, pre-game, post-game? Yeah, those are examples of the types of live events um, that we might host on the platform, being in Spokane, home of Gonzaga basketball. Um, obviously, there's a huge following, and we see that as a great opportunity to host pre-game, post-game, coach interviews, player interviews, and get a lot of engagement on that platform. It's even possible to talk about politics, even though that's so fraught in our country right now. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, hosting. Um, we, we've we hosted a lot of the mayoral debates um, on KHQ, so it could be a good option to to extend those conversations, meet, you know, interview different political candidates. Um, and people can create their own pages. You could have a small business owner, create a page. How do you monetize that? Sure. So um, there's a lot of great content creators, you know, business leaders who are great content creators out there already. We want to encourage them to bring that presence to Cord. 
and potentially even give them the opportunity to be a group host, um, which would position them as the community expert. So, for example, take um, a, a tax business, an accountancy, and they could have a group around financial planning, tax planning, and they get to be kind of the to behind the scenes, it's official, but to the group, the unofficial expert. And it gives the members of that group the opportunity to ask tax questions and get professional advice within this community, obviously with the hope that that community expert would get some business out of it in the long run as well. And I'm, I'm actually excited about the notion since members can, in essence, create their own groups and invite other members into their own sort of sub communities on the KHQ website in this instance. First of all, those can be vetted, so they don't go live automatically. So if you've got a proven member of the community that wants to start a group for cycling enthusiasts, well, that's a wonderful opportunity, and you'll see more of those pop up. And I think what's also terrific then is, let's say that I start a cycling community and I've got 100 active members. We're talking about our next rides and areas that interest us. That's a perfect spot then for that local cycling shop to, to run a sponsorship. Mm-hmm. And for those cyclists to do little videos of themselves yeah, absolutely. and putting them up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, can companies create sponsored content, Annie? Yeah, of course. That would be one of our great monetization opportunities. But what's different about Cord is that they can actually record videos of themselves right on the platform and then publish them. And then it can notify the members of that group um, to come back to the platform and watch their video. So, even though it is sponsored content, the goal is that it adds a lot of value to the members of that group as well. So, uh, Paul, what kind of first party data can a cord community collect and how does it collect it? So that's entirely up to the partner. Um, for example, we can, you can mandate that someone has to authenticate into a community to engage any content. All right. So that's the first. The second is if you host an event, so let's say it's a political forum, or let's let's say that you're going to host an event around some of the original content that your station or, or your network creates. Well, as part of that registration flow, you can build whatever type of sort of ingestion form you like and associate that data with all of the anonymous learnings tied to that user ID. So because sitting underneath this is a full customer data platform and ad server. And so that's one of the really exciting things about this now is, going deeper and understanding how uh, in the local market an individual is not only engaging content on the news site, but inside the community it's, itself allows Annie and her team to create really interesting audience segments. And are they registering these, these uh, the people that are, are, if I'm a member, am I saying I'm Kathy Haley, I live at this address and here's my email address and I'm however how do they register? What yeah, they so it's again, it depends on what type of information you want to catch. So if you want to say we're going to capture first name and email address and phone number, that's it, right? You can do that. Everything is uh, two, two-factor authentication, so that user will then start to receive uh, authentication pins. If you want to go deeper than that and ask questions about, uh, you know, do you plan on buying a car in the next 12 months? Again, entirely up to our, our, our partners. Uh, we don't control that. Well, first-party data is a big issue yes. in this industry. The agencies have it, and the stations don't. So it's a, it's a, it's a. How do stations get their data? Uh, directly from, through the platform. They log in to a dashboard. Correct. They can at, at this point. What they can do, of course, is export that into whatever CRM they're using. We're currently working on deeper CRM integrations. Oh, oh, yeah. I like that. Um, Annie, you first. How is this going to? How is a KH, a, the nonstop local community going to affect your social media strategy? You know, if anything, it's going to make us much more intentional about it. Um, it's not going to detract from anything we're doing on any of our other social profiles. Um, I do think that we'll be much more focused around our strategy, what we're posting, where we're posting it, and why we're posting it, um, with the priority being nurturing our core community. Okay. Paul, I want to ask you about brand safety, which is a really big issue for advertisers. How are you ensuring that? How are we ensuring brand safety mm-hmm. for the advertisers themselves? Oh, and, for, and for nonstop local KHQ. Sure. So, well, first of all, in essence, the platform itself, once installed on a domain, is entirely the partner's brand, right? So there's a dashboard that lets a partner at launch go in and completely customize the experience 
Um, all of this is done by way of a single JavaScript include. So it's not hyperbole to say that a partner can go live in less than 10 minutes. And in fact, we have uh, business use cases that, you know, have gone live in less than five. Um, so in terms of the brands themselves or advertisers, again, they'll have their own content repositories directly on uh, the KHQ hub in this instance, um, where they can manage their own content, reach out to an ad rep and uh, run placements. Okay, great. Um, and AI, you, you have, I mean, I'm, I think there's comments. You want to avoid any unsavory comments or people. Is AI going to help? Yeah. You? I mean, look, that's one of the first considerations when the lift of, of deploying a community is factored in. So the question is always, well, what about moderation? We see what a run, what a train wreck, unfortunately, social media can be. In this instance, there are two, two approaches to moderation. One is, Community moderation, we've made it very easy for members to flag content and sort of put offensive members in a timeout for review. We are right now working on uh, GPT-4 integrations that will s sort of scour all of the content and in real time analyze uh, anything that might be considered offensive and, again, sort of put that into a, uh, a paused state. All right. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. We've been uh, talking about creating a community, local stations using technology to have a community on their website that will dramatically increase revenue, but also let local people create little groups like for cycling or gardening or politics or finance. So, um, Can, you know, it's, it's funny because this weekend, and I told Annie about this, uh, I was watching a morning show on KHQ and there was a, a science guy. He's the, he's the local Bill Nye, I guess. And my kids were learning how to make slime. And it turns out slime recipes can go horribly wrong and have some complexity to them. And, and it was one of those interesting instances in which I realized, you know, this is a perfect opportunity for a QR code to show up on screen so that my kids can go with me back to KHQ site into that particular guy's uh, cord community and find the recipes, right? But the story just sort of ended. And my kids were like, well, Dad, how are we going to do this? And I guess we'll have to Google it. Um, so, you know, for me, my most exciting thing when I consider community is the idea of engagement. When you engage, the revenue will follow, right? If we're creating huge lift for our, our particularly our broadcast partners, the revenue is definitely going to be there. But for me, it's this idea of instead of going to Facebook, and we all know what that's like anymore, going to my local station where local matters and getting to know people that truly care about where I am. Um, Paul, you created court communities for local media. How do you see this rolling out across the country? Yeah, you know, there are a couple of ways. One is the idea of a single ad scale media partner that has tremendous reach in multiple markets, because then you can actually think of this as a network. So if I'm traveling to Seattle, I know that I can go to that station's website, and now I'm going to be plugged into what's happening in that local community. Um, our intention is to grant exclusivity in DMAs uh, for our early media partners and to be one of a kind. I mean, this is truly about 10 years of engineering on the CDP and uh, ad server side and four years of engineering on the video capabilities community. And what's the business model for stations that would partner with you? That's a great question. Um, that's always fluid, isn't it? Right now, we're at sort of a fixed rate and a small rev share on local ad spend. Are we out of time? And we're out of great. time. Thank you. And that's what it looks like. That's David I want to thank Paul Wagner, the CEO and founder of Cord Communities, which is working with local stations to create communities in their viewers. And Annie Quisenberry, who is the head of business development at Nonstop Local KHQ in Spokane. Thanks for listening.